Why is it that in 2022, most 3D printers sold don't have a chamber? Don't have a chamber at all. Yeah. Um, and, and there's no point to having it. There's no point to not having a heated, actively heated chamber. I mean, for PLA, it's fine. You'll never. Yeah, that one material, PETG and PLA, are the two materials you can print without a chamber successfully. What about? Well, a low temp printer can print five materials. I mean, you can do a lot with ABS. If it's got additives and stuff in it, it's not real pure ABS. It still works like crazy. You, yeah, you need a chamber to print I mean, ABS even SLA successfully. Printers, like if they're not heated, they warp. You got a lot of warping factors. So the problem is, and one of the things we specialize in is actually heated chambers and high temperature thermoplastics with warp like crazy, whether they're amorphous, semi-crystalline, whatever, they still warp as they cool down. So one of the things that really helps improve that process, whether it's CF nylon, polycarbonate, or the high temp crazy stuff like PSU or PPSU, um, is a heated chamber. Let me explain how a heated chamber works and why it's important, because you print an ABS and those first layers go down at 250 degrees, right? Well, say you go two inches up the part and you're still printing. Everything on the bed's still gonna be 100 degrees. Everything right after it's been printed is still hot, 250 degrees. Everything in between is ambient room temperature. Now there's a coefficient of thermal expansion. That basically wants to do is tear the part apart. So when one part's hot, one part's cold, it's going to cause issues with overall structural strength and warping. That's what warping basically is. Yeah, it, it really causes a big thing. Now, like we'll see, you know, you can print peak on a Ender 3, uh, with 160 Celsius build plate, um, up to a certain thickness. What, like a quarter a, inch? A millimeter, um, no. before it starts going crazy. Uh, open air, sure, you can print cold with the cooling fan, but then you go to anneal it. But then, when you anneal it, the semi-crystalline you know, plastics, they warp like crazy, and you'll never get dimensional accuracy. I disagree with you, sir. Do you? Tell me why. You're printing peak, even 90C chamber, Ultima especially, you can see when someone opens the door on the print. So no, you can't. Yeah, no, you really can't. Um, you could make basic brackets or stuff that'll be functional in your garage. Absolutely, no problem. Uh, but for actual end use parts, or if you want a part that's got the full mechanical properties of something like Ultim, then you absolutely have to process it and, and distribute, or uh, what is it? Depose Evenly it? distribute the heat? Deposition? Depose? Is that deposing? I don't know. Deposit. Deposit. Ah, you got to deposit it. But basically, you got to 3D print it in an environment where it can all cool at the same rate. There's cool at the same rate, and there's keep an even amount of heat throughout the part. So even if it's only 90, if it's not, you know, 200, which even you need to keep the heat within it so that there's less structural strain, this isn't making any sense. What I'm saying is you want to keep the the smallest deviation between the printed temperature and ambient temperature possible. So elevating the heat around it by any degree is helpful. That's why a lot of printers get away with uh, non-actively heated chambers, um, but then try printing a very tall polycarbonate part yeah. and see what happens. You get layer delamination. I mean, even at the at certain thicknesses in Ultim, in a 90C chamber, if it's a thick wall, you know, you're going about two centimeters up, you're gonna see delamination. Uh, you can do a certain, you know, thin walls and whatnot um, and have great strength, great, great properties, but until you get up into that super high temp range, you know, up into the 150 to 180 chamber temperature, you know, printing uh, an inch thick wall that's solid is, you're not gonna, you're not gonna really get what you're looking for. Um, you take a one meter bar of steel and then you heat that up to 250 Celsius and you measure that bar of steel again, it's going to be longer because it expands. Now, if you only heat up one part of it, that one part's, but wherever that transition is from high heat to low heat, there's going to be a ton of forces, uh, stresses of, of, those parts expanding and contracting, trying to pull itself apart. That piece of steel has already been made. Uh, so what all this comes down to is, if you want to print the super high temp thermoplastics like Peak, Ultim, PSU, Ultim. ABS, nylon, and, and polycarbonate, the still low temp stuff you want to chamber. It's going to make your life so much easier.
So what do you buy? There's a lot of different printers out there on the market. There's a lot of availability. There's cheap ones, there's expensive ones, there's outrageous ones. Um, and really it comes down to what do you need to do with your parts? Are you printing aerospace grade parts? All right, go with the highest chamber temperature you could possibly, possibly get. Are you printing parts to be super strong and functional or be chemically resistant? Um, then you know you can get away with different things. Now we sell at Vision Miner a whole range of 3D printers from the 22 IDEX to the Funmat HD to the Aeon M2 uh, all the way to the Cincinnati MAM and we've got a whole bunch of different options depending where you're at and depending what you really need. So if you really need that stuff uh, definitely give us a call and we'll help you out. We've got plenty of people to take care of you and figure out what would really suit your needs. Now uh, we sell 3D scanners, 3D printers, all the materials, other accessories. We're even getting into SLS polymers, and uh, just things as simple as CF nylon or HTN CF25, uh, we can really help you out with our experience and sort of giving you our take on how to print these successfully and get a strong part and get a clean part and really use these machines effectively, even if you're just starting out. Now, if you are just starting out, do know that there's a learning curve. It, it's not easy. It's not like one, two, three, hit a button and you've got a part like a microwave. Um, it is a skill like CNC. You have to know your top 20 settings. What does each one do? And then watch with your, with your material to understand how's that material gonna behave with this certain geometry, the size of part, that thickness of a part, and how's the, the heat gonna be transferred throughout the entire part, throughout the entire printing process, to understand that once you get up to that level, it might start warping on that sharp corner, and you can add some cooling fan or not um, to avoid that. There's a lot of different factors. Uh, Cole, any input on that? To 3D print well is not easy. That's like buying a CNC machine and be like, I'll just figure this out on my own. It'll be easy. Uh, it, sure, it might work, it. but it's not going to be good. And you can do it. it Take that, practice. The thing is, you can do it yourself. It's just not easy. You can absolutely buy a machine today and get yourself all the way from zero to 100 from Google. There's plenty of people that have done that. When you have people like us helping you, what you can call, and you can look at our resources and our videos and everything else. By the way, subscribe if you haven't already and you like this content, we've got a lot more coming, um, then you'll be fine. But you gotta have that learner's mindset. You gotta have the mindset that you are going to discover things that you didn't even know were going to be a thing. You're gonna encounter challenges that you had no way of ex being able to expect and just know that you are going to get through those as long as you push through and try it a couple times. <sighs> Other than that, if you got that mindset, you'll be fine. You'll be, you'll be cranking out amazing parts in a matter of hours, days, weeks, whatever it takes. Um, but it is, it is well worth it and the stuff you can do and the ROI on these parts is insane. Absolutely nuts. Uh, you know, we're talking parts that cost $800 before and for a person who has a machine in peak, they can make them for $14 in raw material. I mean, that's, that's, yeah, the money's there. If you're a small business or something doing this, uh, then it's huge. If you're just a hobbyist and you want to play around with crazy materials, you know, maybe modify some other machines or something like that. Consider uh, one of our machines. You know, they're not the, we're not the cheapest in town, but they're definitely good machines and we vet and use everything that we sell. Don't buy a high temp printer as your first machine. Please buy an Ender 3. They're great machines. If you can get it, you can make an Ender 3 print just as well as a high temp machine because it's about tuning the machine, learning the settings. Now you won't be able to print a quarter or a fifth of what a high temp machine can print, but the fundamental process is there in any low temp machine. So if you're trying to jump straight to peak with 3D printing, you're going to have a bad time. I don't care what printer you buy. On that note, we're gonna dive more into this dimensional accuracy and how good our printers actually on our next video. And it might've already been released or it's coming out right after this one. So make sure you're subscribed, leave a comment down below, letting us know what you'd like us to talk about or any questions you might have, or as a as always, give us a call, shoot us an email. We're always here to help. With that, thank you so much for watching. Have a positive rest of your day and I'll see you on the next video.